If you're anything like me, when you're photographing a subject you find exciting, you tend to take a lot of pictures in an effort to increase the odds of capturing an incredible image. The drawback of this habit is that you can end up with a relatively large number of images that can look very similar. Fortunately, comparing a set of images, whether to find the best among similar images or to decide on one of a variety of very different images, is very easy with the Compare view in Lightroom. I'd be the first to admit that the controls in the Compare view can be a little confusing at first, but I truly believe that if you take the time to understand the concepts and to learn to utilize the Compare view, you'll find yourself using it regularly. As an example, when I was in South Africa, I had the opportunity to go on safari for a few days, and I was very excited to be able to photograph some incredible animals in the wild. That excitement, of course, led me to capture far more images than I really needed, and it meant I had to spend some extra time sorting through the images to find my favorites. In some cases, I would have a series of images and wanted to choose a single favorite among them, and the compare view made it easy. Let's take a look at how it works. On the film strip here, as you can see, I have a series of images taken of the same lion. I want to compare all of them and settle on a single image of this lion that I consider to be my favorite. So I'll click on the first image of the lion on the film strip and then shift click on the last image that I want to consider. I could also control click on Windows or command click on the Macintosh in order to toggle the selection of one or more images. Once I've selected the images I want to compare, I'll click on the Compare View button on the toolbar below the preview image. I could also press the letter C to access the Compare View. Once in Compare View, you'll notice that I have two images side by side. The Select image on the left is the one that is, at the moment, presumably the best of the set. Of course, I've not yet actually started comparing the images, so that's a little arbitrary at the moment. The image on the right is the candidate image. This is the image that we're considering replacing the select image with. In other words, we're trying to decide which of these two images we consider the best, and the idea is whichever of these two images we determine to be the best will make the select. We can then see a different candidate image to compare with the select, repeating that process until we've narrowed it down to one favorite image. Now, as you can probably appreciate already, having two images on the screen at the same time is consuming a fair amount of space, and so it doesn't make a lot of sense to keep all of our panels visible while working in this view. As a result, I typically press Shift-Tab to hide all of the panels while I'm working in this mode. In this case, because I want you to see a little bit better what's going on, I'm going to bring up the film strip panel so we'll be able to see our progress a little bit better. But under normal circumstances, I would keep the film strip hidden while I'm working in the compare view. In the process of comparing these images, there's a good chance you're going to want to zoom in. For example, you might want to check to see if both of them are sharp, or to check minor details that can make a big difference in the final image. We can adjust both images to the same zoom setting and even pan around so that we're looking at the same area of the image. Now in this particular case, these two images don't align perfectly, so we won't necessarily be looking at the exact same area of both images, but this capability still gives us a good opportunity to compare the images very effectively. By default, the two images are locked in terms of zoom and pan. So if I click and drag on the zoom control to zoom in on my images, you'll notice that both of them zoom in to the same degree. If I click and drag on the image to pan around, you'll see that they also stay in sync. Of course, in this case, if I were trying to, for example, compare sharpness of the eye, then I might want to move them around slightly different from each other. In that case, I would first keep the lock on while I zoom in toward the eye, and then, after panning around one of the images so I can see an eye, I would turn off the lock so that the two are no longer linked and I can move the other image independently. Once I've made changes to each of the images, I can click the sync button to put them back into sync with each other. In this particular case, that doesn't exactly give me a good result, but in many cases that will help to align the two images to help you with your comparison. Generally speaking, I leave the lock turned on, but as you can see, there are situations where you would want to turn it off in order to adjust one of the images to see a different area relative to the other. For now, I'll just set both images to fit the available space. On the film strip, you'll notice that we have a white diamond and a black diamond. The white diamond indicates the currently selected image, the image on the left here. The black diamond indicates the current candidate, the image on the right. We can navigate through the candidate images by using the left and right arrows over at the right side of the toolbar. As I click the right arrow, the candidate image moves to the right along the film strip, and as I click the left arrow, it moves to the left. I can go through each of the images to get a sense of what I have to compare, 
until I get to the last image. Of course, it's not necessary to scroll through the images first, but I find it helpful so that I have a better idea of what I'm working with. Next, we look at the key controls for the compare view. These options allow us to swap the select and candidate images or replace the select image with the candidate. In many respects, these seem to do the same thing, but there is an important distinction. I generally use the swap button when I'm pretty sure about the decision I've made, but not 100% certain. This allows me to switch back and forth between the two images while I continue to make a decision about which I think is the best. If I decide that the candidate image is better than the select image, then I would typically click the Make Select button, in other words, to make the candidate become the selected image. When you click this button, the select image will effectively disappear and go back into the pool of potential candidates. Meanwhile, the candidate becomes the select and a new image will replace the candidate image based on the images that we've already selected. Of course, in many cases, the image on the right will be one that you decide is not worthy of consideration. In this case, for example, while it's interesting that our lion has fallen asleep, I don't think this is going to be my favorite image. So I don't even need to consider it anymore and I'll simply click the X button to deselect this photo from the set of candidates. You'll notice on the film strip that that image is now no longer selected, so it will not be included as I scroll through the images that are currently selected. I can continue to go through this process, making decisions about the individual images as I work. So here we have an image that's relatively interesting and even a little bit funny, but I don't think it's better than the current select image, so I'm going to remove it from the selection. In this case, it looks like I caught the lion just barely out of a yawn, so again, not an ideal photo. I'll go ahead and deselect it. And then I have another image where it's a partial yawn. I'll deselect that one. Now we're getting to something a little bit more interesting. This time, I've got a bit of a yawn, the teeth are being bared, but it looks more like a squint than a yawn. Still, I kind of feel like this might be a better image than my current select, so I'll go ahead and replace the select with this candidate. Now, in this case, there's no photo selected because I was at the end of my list, but I can navigate to the left to choose the next image. Now, this looks much better. I like this image a lot, and so far, I'd have to say it's probably my favorite. So I'm going to go ahead and make this candidate the select. And then I continue through this process. I think at this point you get the idea. I would continue to deselect any photos that I consider not as good as the current select. As you can see by the fact that there's no images selected on the film strip and no image in the candidate position, I've narrowed it down to a single image. Once I've identified that final image, I can simply click the Done button to get out of my Compare view and start working on this image, whatever that may have been. I can go into the Develop module and optimize this image more, or go into one of my Output modules to share this image, assign metadata, whatever it is that I want to do with this particular image. The key thing is that I've used the Compare view to help me sort through a series of similar images in order to find the best among that group.